Boom, chicka ba, chicka boom! Welcome to Ballroom Mastery, everybody. It's Vaughn here, the founder of Ballroom Mastery, and it is my pleasure to answer a question today coming from Diane, one of the uh, members of Ballroom Mastery Blueprint. If you are not part of this program, you've got to check it out. People are really enjoying and benefiting a lot from the lessons that we're delivering from a very random format audio. <laughs> so um, she sent me a message today. Uh, that I would like to uh, post here for you uh, so you can have a little read and then I'm going to address it because it's one that I believe that we've all felt before, right? And so let me know how you relate to this. Let me read it out. So post-exam fog has set in. I've set a goal for double bronze in de December and maybe pro-am, but the thought of pro-am paralyzes me slightly. How can I start unpacking why? It's way out of my comfort zone. I'm struggling to understand why my coach is so keen but perhaps that is the lack of my experience in the dance world. He obviously knows my abilities better than me. But how can I believe that I can put, uh, I can and put the, you'll look stupid, forget it all, fail, snap a heel, or just plain fail internal chat away. It almost feels harder than learning the steps, and trust me, he's taking no prisoners at the moment. Now, this is really fascinating, right? Can you relate to this? I know I, know I can, 100%. Um, and it's one of the reasons I do these videos. It's one of the reasons I'm in the process of creating Ballroom Mastery Academy. It's going to be something that's gonna blow your socks off. I really feel it's a beautiful combination of technique and mindset growth um, uh, strategies to combine together so you can become your best version of yourself. If you're interested in that, check out ballroommastery.com to get on the RSVP list. Now, let's address a couple of things here. I want, I want to use a beautiful story. I want you to imagine that you're observing this. It's a dark, dark night, way out in the middle of the desert. The sky is black. There's beautiful stars out. You know one of those nights where the stars just seem to twinkle and you can see the heavens open up? And there's an Indian Grand Cherokee and his grandson sitting there. And the grandson looks at the Cherokee and says, I would say it the other way around. I'm sorry, I think there was a bit of a, a lag there. The Cherokee looks at the grandson and says, son, inside each of us there rages a, uh, a battle, a battle between two wolves. One is anger, fear, hatred, jealousy, envy, lust and greed. And the other is peace, joy, beauty, love, gratitude. And the uh, Grand Cherokee paused for a minute. Grandson said, which one wins? To which the Cherokee replied, the one you feed. And so the real question becomes when you're looking at that internal chatter, and it's a very deep question, really, because there's a lot going on there, and it's better if I talk to, the, to you as a client to know exactly what's going on. But imagine this for a moment, that within you, it's not about, it's not about, not having negative thoughts. I think that's a big misnomer. The idea of just being positive is a dangerous one because it's like, you know, someone who's bipolar, who's 100% positive all the time, they ruin their life, right? Because they've got, they don't have the sense of internal skepticism that's healthy. They don't have a sense of being able to discern like what's going on and risk, right? And so we need those parts of us. In fact, of like the emotions that we have, you know, a lot of them are inherently negative, but they're not negative in the sense that they're going to kill you. The reason that they, that they are needed is so they help balance out like the, the optimism we need going forward, but not so much that we blindly run off a cliff and die. Like, so it's like, imagine if you're in a cave and you're like, let's go out hunting, and you think nothing of the saber-toothed tiger is going to come and eat you and your family if you don't go, we better be prepared for this. We better know the lay of the land first. We better be prepared with weapons so we can protect ourselves. And, you know, maybe it's not a good idea to go out at midnight hunting, right? You need that internal dialogue. It serves a purpose, but you have to, like feeding the correct wolf, keep it in check. The more power you give the wrong voice, the stronger that wrong voice becomes, and the more it holds you in place and cripples you. So another thing to think about is, like, you have a, a bunch of personalities, sub-personalities within you vying for attention. So the analogy I use for some of my coaching clients is that it's like you're on a big ship on an ocean and you're sailing through life. 
And the ocean under you, under you represents your unconscious mind. It's the void we don't know. We don't know the danger that's down there or the beauty that's down there. It's just we can't see it, but it's there. It's, it's our fears, our, our hopes, our dreams. Everything's under there. But on top of this ship are about a hundred or maybe a thousand unruly children running around, running wild. And they're all screaming, but they're all different personalities. You know, one could be malevolence. Another one could be jealousy. Another one could be hatred, right? But they're all separate personalities, right? They're all separate sub-personalities that you and I all have. We all have them, okay? That's why we can always relate to stories about this sort of stuff. We can relate to being jealous. We can relate to being in love. We can relate to, be, to being elated. We can relate to being upset and being sad because these are part of who we are. We all have these personalities. However, and, you're, and, and it's important to understand this, the one you give the most attention to becomes a predominant personality within how you operate. It becomes a default. So somebody who's inherently an angry person, and please understand that people are not their behavior in the sense that a behavior is something you've given a lot of strength to, right? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a reaction, I suppose, to the, a predominant personality. Now, why is this important? Because you have the capacity within you, Diane, and anyone else to do anything you seriously put your mind to. But you can't do it on the false pretext thinking that you need everything to be perfect and you need to have nothing wrong with you to be able to be in the game and to go out and go for what you want. In fact, that will never happen. It's the other way around. You may have predominant personalities and, and temperaments inside of you that are not favorable to you going into pro-am and they hold you in place, but they protect you, right, by holding you in place. But you also have other parts of you that are like, no, I can do this. I, I have, you have other voices that are, that are encouraging you, right? Those are the voices that you must give more strength to. Like, you can do this. And it's okay to be a bit cautious, but you can do it. Everything that you've done up until this point in your life has created a comfort zone. So let's discuss this motion of a comfort zone because we have personality traits and we have sort of voices that we give strength to. And we know that if the strengths we the, the voices we give the most strength to become the ones that rule the way we do life, well, then we also have to realize that we have a comfort zone and we have to look at that and go, what is our comfort zone? Well, it's a good thing to think about because a comfort zone is an amazing thing to really give thought to. It is nothing more than the experiences of your life, the belief systems, the value hierarchy you operate with, and the opinions of other people have basically geared your thinking and actions a certain way and those actions have created a certain result that result becomes what you're used to what you become used to forms the comfort zone the comfort zone is your place of safety it's necessary you need a comfort zone we all have to have a comfort zone do not think you no, don't need one we need one so we have certainty so we know that we can get our needs met however it's a dangerous place because nothing stays the same growth is life now, if you're in a process of decay and going backwards and dying, it's because you're stuck in a comfort zone, right? Life is about creation or disintegration. Now, in dancing, if you're not going forward and you're not challenging yourself and you're not stepping out of that comfort zone, you're going backwards and you're actually disintegrating and you're dying. So your entire job in life is to continually push that comfort zone and expand it. So remember, it's not about getting rid of it. It's about expanding it. Now, how do you expand it? By taking new actions. New actions equal new results. So a new action for you would be, yes, do pro-am 100%. Do it with fear. That's what courage is. It's doing it in the face of fear, not removing the fear because that won't go away. It's a necessary part of what you need uh, to have to go through. However, that comfort zone of knowing what you know is a dangerous place. So I encourage anyone here watching today, set the goal to be scary. It's got to be outside of what you know. By doing that, let me tell you this, the trippy thing for you is that as you do more and more pro-ams, let's say you do three pro-ams in the next two years, guess what's going to happen? Pro-am's going to feel very normal. It's still going to be exciting, don't get me wrong, but you'll be used to it because you know what to expect. Your comfort zone has now grown. Guess what you do? The same thing. You now need to challenge yourself. Do you do more intense choreography? Do you get a different dress? Do you challenge yourself at the high, a next level in prime, right? Like the, the next grade up. Um, do you add another dancing you've been like avoiding, like a pasodoble or a tango, right? Do you get what I'm saying? That's how you expand it. By doing that, you increase the quality of your life. All right. So just to recap, 
The voices you feed are the ones that become stronger. The stronger they become, the more predominant they become, the more of a default that becomes for you. So are you more confident or are you full of doubt all the time? Remember, both serve a function, but which one is predominating you? The next thing is your comfort zone needs to be continually expanded by challenging yourself with things you've never done before. As basic as it sounds, it's exactly what you've done anyway to get to this point. The last thing I would like to mention, it ain't any of your business what people think of you, right? So at the end of the day, it's nice to hear opinions from other people, but really, I mean, without being narcissistic, it's not your business what I think of you. It's not your business what Julian or like, who else is up on here? Diane, hello, hello. Um, or Avid, like whatever somebody else thinks of you isn't any of your business, right? So if somebody wants to tell you what they think, that's great. But at the end of the day, you've got to do it for you, and you've got to do it for the reasons that make you proud of you at the end of the day. Like, you'll be more proud of yourself if you step out and do this challenge because of how much fear you feel at the moment. You will look back and go, I am so proud of myself for doing that. Yes, that is what the win is. It, it, look, you may fall. You may completely bomb out. So... Again, positive thinking is a bunch of bullshit. It isn't about going, it doesn't, that, that won't happen. It may happen. That is the uncertainty of dancing. That is the uncertainty of risk. That is where the joy of life lives. It's in that space. It isn't in what you know. It's in like, I don't know if I'm going to like die on the dance floor. I have no idea if it's going to work out. That's the joy. I mean, that's why we dance. Like, we really don't know what's going to happen at any moment in a competition. That's what makes it so interesting. If we knew everything that was going to work out for us in our life, we wouldn't like life. It would suck, right? We don't need it that way. So what we're always looking for is a challenge that's within the reason of our, um, you know, within a reasonable amount of uh, our, com within a reasonable amount outside of our comfort zone without completely destroying our life, right? And I think prime is exactly up your alley. And I think for anyone watching this, they should do the thing they fear and go for it, right? Because at the end of the day, the things you fear become normalized if you do them often enough. And all you have to do is do enough primes to realize that. All you have to do is do enough Facebook lives to realize that. All you have to do is do enough public speaking to realize it can become very normalized after a while. Now, please understand, I wasn't born doing what I'm doing right now. I trained myself by putting myself into situations that scared the shit out of me all the time. Like seminar after seminar, I got so scared, I would be sweaty. I don't, oh my God, I'd make mistakes and like I'd make, and, and I'd go in front of people and it would panic me, right? I go into these things live. I have no notes. I don't know what I'm going to say. I might make a mistake. I might completely bomb out. I might repeat myself or be too long. Whatever. The point is, is I'm doing it so I get better. And that's what I want you to do. Do things so you can get better. Do things so they make you stronger as a person. And so you can be proud of who you are as a result. Um, and, you know, check out. Look at this. Uh, you've got Helen supporting you. Hook into this tribe. One of my goals with Boring Mastery is to connect dancers all over the world in a, in a setting that's encouraging of your failure. It's encouraging of you making mistakes. It's encouraging of you pushing forward into spaces you're not comfortable going because that is where growth is and that's where the quality of your life will increase the most. And so in my credo for you, in my sort of motto of how Bora Masters should look at themselves, failing isn't failure, it's a lesson. Every lesson is an opportunity for growth. The biggest adversities are opportunities for growth. And that the mistakes you make are nature's way of teaching you. So by all means, I say trip as often as you can. Just don't keep tripping because you're not learning if you just keep making the same mistakes. So go on, have confidence, make new mistakes, embrace new challenges because that is where the joy of life is. I want to thank you all for being part of this today. I want to thank you for being part of Bora Mastery. Check out boramastery.com and uh, stay tuned for Bora Mastery Academy, everyone. Thanks very much.